So we get to give this guy a little pet. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Feels just like a nice pair of boots right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can get boots out of here. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a small coin purse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, hello there, and welcome to another beautiful day for an adventure here in Maplewood, Minnesota, right here at the Maplewood Mall. Last time we were at this location, we visited a place called Cockadoodle Zoo. They had all sorts of cute baby animals that we could feed and pet and interact with, and it sure was fun. And today, we're gonna do kind of the same thing, except they've changed their name now to Sustainable Safaris. They've made changes to the indoors, so we are gonna see what that's all about. Plus, the Minnesota Renaissance Festival is closed this year, so they brought a flavor of the Renaissance right here, right here to Sustainable Safaris. And so, we've got a lot to see today. This should be really fun. If you are brand new to this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome to another edition of Tommy Travels. It's Tommy Travels. <laughs> Come on with me, you guys. Let's go see what there is to see. This is what they were talking about when they said the Renaissance Festival for Sustainable Safari. Yeah. Yes. What do you have there? An American alligator. American alligator? Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. It's Fat Albert. He's two years old. Fat Albert is his name? Yep. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. And then you play the, the okay. fiddle? A uh, five string viola. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Her name is Tempest and my name is Ursula. Nice to meet you. And you, sir? I'm Gandalf. Gandalf. Well, that's what I thought. And you look just like him, Indeed. too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Tommy Travels. Wow. Thank you so much. Go enjoy yourself. I certainly, I certainly will. Thank you very much, you guys. And so here it is, the entrance to Sustainable Safari. I like that logo with the kangaroo. They've even got a TV out here that gives you little sneak previews of some of the animals and experiences that you can see inside. That is great. All sorts of greenery outside. On a cloudy, kind of a cold, chilly day, it's a kind of a cool place to go where you can see cool animals like this right here, this guy. Hello, little guy. <laughs> it is a real zoo right here inside of the mall. And the way it works is you come in and you can decide what kind of an experience that you want to have. If you want to feed the goats or the, the birds or what you want to do, all of the prices are right up there. And you can walk through the entrance and have a great time. And right here is the entrance to Sustainable Safari where they've got it all set up with little baby goats getting something to eat. And my favorite thing right here the parakeet encounter which is what we're about to experience right now the door to get in and there's some parakeets hanging right out on the screen here <laughs> saying hello saying come on in looks like you got yourself some food here <laughs> look at that cute little guy and so the way it works is this fine lady will let us into the shelter. Hi, <laughs> Hello? Alright, so if you want to come in here, I do ask that you don't quite fully walk in yet. I want you guys to stand outside the seeds. Okay. Make sure you're hiding any seed sticks that you might have. Oh, 70s vibe. <laughs> Alright, so when you go in, I ask that you sit down on a bench. Okay. Make sure you're not standing up at all. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you're shuffling your feet. We don't want to step on any birds at all. Okay. So if you just want to head on in and take a seat, you can. Okay. Okay, perfect, thank you. Here we go. We're hiding the, the food stick right now. We're gonna, we're gonna, look at all those birds up there. Just gonna sit right down on this bench here. See who, who comes to see me. It's a 
and I'm gonna get them to come down again and I think that I could just have the broom out. Okay. And so we just stick out our stick. We just stick out our stick here. And look at what happens. Oh my goodness, they're all over. Oh my gosh. Look at that. They're all up here. Right here. They're all over the floor over there. And we got another one coming in. Oh my god, and another one. So, it's an invasion. These guys are parakeets, also known as buggies. These guys are originally from South America, Central North America. And the original color of buggies are actually the dark green ones with the yellow head. And oh. through science and breeding and all that stuff, there's no like real source that I've found that tells me how the other ones came about. But those are more exotic colors. Oh. So that you can also tell the difference between the males and the females based off of that little strip that's colored right above their beak. If it's blue or purple, they're a male. If it's pink or cream they, or the yellow, it'll be a female. Oh. And the females in the body tend to be a lot more dominant as well. I see. Look at these. They're just coming up to me. That thing is going to be gone. Look, the food is almost gone on that. I love doing these. I've done a couple parakeet encounters on Tommy Travels, and this is my favorite place to go. Look at that. I think they just want me for my food. <laughs> Look at that. Just absolutely beautiful. Oh, this one was, this one just shooed one way. He said, get away from me, it's my stick. Let's turn this around here. And so now that we are done with the parakeet encounter, we can pick up our cup of food. And that's what we use to feed all the baby goats and kangaroos and whatever we might run into around here. And after something like that, they do have something nice around here. Hand washing stations where you can just press the pump and get water to come out. Soap and water and wash your hands and they have these placed all over to promote cleanliness, which is always a good thing. And welcome to Tommy Travels. What's your name? My name's Mora. And what information can you tell us about this fine place? So this is a sustainable safari. So I am very excited to be here. I've been here about a month. However, I was a guest beforehand and I can't be more passionate about the stuff that we do here. So we do have, this is a family zoo. So there is also a family farm. So the animals take turns being here. So everyone gets a chance here and at the farm. And we have so many people on staff that care so much about these animals and their well-being. We have people who are here for nutrition, people here just to clean up their poop and sleep around. We're just so happy with our animals and we just it's a pleasure being here All of us like to be here early stay late just to take care of these wonderful animals and these creatures They're part of our family and we'd love for you guys to come visit us. That is awesome. Thank you so much It was great to meet you and I'll let you get back to work and helping out all the animals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you And so first on the agenda baby goats. How can you go wrong with baby goats? Look at these little guys. Let's take a little piece of food out for them. Here you go. Want a little something something? You want that? Does that look good? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Not the hungriest goat I've ever seen, but one of the cutest, that's for sure. What a cute. You want a little more? Want a little more? There you go. How cute is that? And in this little enclosure we find ourselves a tortoise. Look at that guy. <laughs> He's like, oh sure. Those birds can fly around like a million miles an hour. I'll just I'll just stay right here. Yeah, I got my plate of food in front of me. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And there's a guy I didn't see last time. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an American Badger coming right over to say hi. I like that, when timing works out like that on Tommy Travels. 
What a beautiful animal. And look at this. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this emu was naughty and spilled my cup of food. <laughs> and now it's going to have a feast right there. Look at that. Look at this beautiful little guy. How cute is that? <laughs> Made quite a mess, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure your insurance will cover it. <laughs> Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And here's another emu right here. That wants in on the action. Look at that. <laughs> Emus, you know where they can find them? In the land down under. That's right, Australia. This guy's saying, I can't quite reach that cup, mate. Push it a little bit closer. <laughs> All right, everyone, big crowd. You want to hear me? There we go. So, my name is Safari Bob. I'm uh, the, one of the owners of the, the zoo here today. So, I appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, with this show here, I have four animals behind the stage. I'm going to do a little talk about each little animal. Um, I should be able to have most of you guys pet them, too. So after I'm done talking, I'll let you pet them. The last one we cannot, and I'll explain that when uh, we get to that last one. Okay? Uh, so we'll start with this one. This is Fat Albert. Now, Fat Albert is a North American alligator. These guys live uh, in the southeast part of the United States, from Texas around the coast of Florida, and then up into North, up the coastline to North Carolina, in the United States of Arkansas and Alabama. Uh, now these guys are a carnivore. So a carnivore is a meat eater. Right? There's no grocery shopping for these guys, right? There's no going to the, the meat department. They have to be able to catch their food. So their physiology is designed for being an apex predator, to be able to catch their food quite easily. All right? Um, some of the thing, I'll talk about some of their features here. Their eyeballs we're going to start with. Their eyes being right on top of their head, they can see pretty much 360 degrees around. Okay? Right where my finger is, they have a little blind spot. All right? So there's only one other creature on the planet that I know of that can see almost all the way around the body. Do you guys know who that is? It's moms. <laughs> right? How many of you guys can see behind their head without looking? Have you ever been caught? Has mom ever caught you when you went looking? And she's not looking? She's got eyes behind her head. All right, what is this? You know? This is called an opossum. It's not a possum. Some people call them opossums too, but it's, it's actually an opossum. Possums are actually found in Australia, so they're a different animal altogether. Um, these, but both of them are considered a marsupial. And a marsupial is an animal that has a pouch. They develop their babies in a pouch. Uh, other, other marsupials that we actually have here are the wallaby, the kangaroo, and the sugar glider. So other ones would be the koala bear. It's actually a, not a bear, it's actually a marsupial. Uh, the koala bear, pardon me. And the Tasmanian devil, the wombat, and that's all I can think of right now. So there's several different breeds of, of marsupials. Uh, this is the only marsupial you find in North America, in the United States, okay? These guys were naturally found in the southern parts of the United States, and then in the late 80s, 90s, they started migrating up here into Minnesota. And now you kind of see them everywhere, kind of south of St. Cloud at this point. You can find them all the way across. There's a little bit up north, but for the most part, the line is at St. Cloud right now. Uh, let's see what else. Their tail. They got this really awesome tail. Creeps out some people, but it's pretty cool. This tail is called a prehensile tail. And see if she'll do it. This is, let's see, oh, this one's lazy. So they do not, this one doesn't want to hang from his tail, but they actually can hang from their tail. Their tail is used for mostly carrying stuff back to their home, their nest, like food, maybe sticks, twigs, whatnot, to make a nest. Um, and then at breeding season, or when they have their babies, they'll actually carry babies on their tail, too. So they're known to have up to 20 babies at a time. So typical is four to seven in that range. Um, and when they're born, they're the size of about a dime cut in half. So really tiny, like a jelly bean, okay? And they grow very, very rapidly. This one here is about five months old. It's this year's baby. So you can see how fast they go from, my, from that jelly bean size to this size in, in a relatively short time. Way different than he looks. Oh my gosh, so soft. Oh, what a cutie. Oh, and he just scratched me too. I love the camera. Oh my 
goodness. Oh, no. <laughs> this is this is a porcupine. Nice job. This is the world's biggest porcupine, but it's a baby. Does that come out right? So, this one is about a month old. This one's name is Quill Smith. Quill he's a Smith. Baby boy. I love it. Um, and he's little. He's he's tiny actually. His brother is almost twice the size as he is now. So this one's kind of a runt, and he's so cute. He's gonna be the cutest little potato ever, right? So uh, these guys are native to Africa. Um, there's about 30 different porcupine breeds, and this is the biggest of the breeds, the, the, the crested porcupine of Africa. So they get the crest from this, this, this hairdo right here, okay? Porcupine. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, very coarse. What a cute little guy. Oh my goodness, look at that. A skunk. <laughs> that is absolutely adorable. Look at that guy. Oh my goodness gracious. What is that this? That is awesome. I had a tiger, right? So, good news is, no one's ever been sprayed before. Okay, I've had, this is flower. I've had flower for three years now, I believe. Um, got him when he was six, seven days old. And he's never had an accident. So skunks can actually start spraying at about seven to eight days old. So, okay. So, skunks are native to North America. All, all the breeds of skunk are native to North America. From Canada, into Mexico, Costa Rica area, there's all different kinds of breeds of skunks. The main ones are the spotted skunk. Uh, we just got brand new baby spotted skunks. They're right on the end over here on the other side of the armadillo. They're about yay big. Uh, you can actually find those in Minnesota too. Um, the striped skunk is this one. It's the most common skunk that we all know when we, we hear the word skunk. And then there's the, the hooded skunk, the hognose skunk, and a couple other ones I don't remember. So, um, so what a skunk's going to do, um, if you happen to stumble across it, and it just does not want to spray you, it's going to do a lot of weird things. So you guys remember Bambi, um, Thumper, the rabbit? So skunks actually do what Thumper did in the movie. He slaps his feet on the ground, dances with his feet. You know, that's what skunks actually going to do. They're going to slap, they're going to drag their feet backwards, they're going to hiss. They're gonna um, drool all over the place. They got really bad breath, so the drool is kind of effective sometimes. Um, so whatever they can do to to stop the spray, and then if they don't, I'm gonna cover his rear end. So I'm gonna just we don't want any. You know, keep this on. Keep on. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna I'll keep it plastic. They're gonna plop their butt straight, and they're gonna go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get it? Did you get sprayed? We've got a little spray thing. Is that a joke or a spray? A joke. Oh, you're a stinker. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was hoping Tom I was like, whoa, I did. I jumped. So, he is decented. I did not lie. He never sprayed anyone before. <laughs> Look at this section. It says you can go fishing for prairie dogs. And I'm like, how can you go fishing for prairie dogs? And they have little fishing poles set up right here. You can take the fishing pole, and it has some food, and you can put it right down here in front of these guys. Look at that. <laughs> they feed right from it. Look at, whoops, I just. Look at that. This is taking it right off of there. How cool is this? Fishing for prairie dogs. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. What a wonderful little guy. He's hungry. And here's an animal I have never heard of. It's called a blue tongued skink. S K I N K. It uses its bright blue tongue as a defense mechanism when it feels 
threatened, it puffs up and sticks out its blue tongue and hopefully frightens predators away. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, what do we have here? That this is, is a uh, Chumley, the African porcupine. Chumley. African porcupine. Look at that big guy. Can you put your arm through the Oh my up, goodness. <laughs> Just woke no, no. up from a nap, it right looks there, like. Right there. See, he'll eat it. There you oh, go. so cute. And so here is a goat right here, ready and waiting for a little bit of food. So we have our, our food dish. We can now pull this up through the lever. You're saying, hey, yeah, come and feed me, come and feed me. There, there you go, buddy. <laughs> Dinner is served. Then you just hold it there until he's all done, done with his fine little buffet. <laughs> all you can eat, and there you go. You have goat to be kidding me. <laughs> and then look at this. We have some red kangaroos. Here's one that doesn't look so red, but maybe he's hungry. Let's see if he might want a little something to eat right there. Oh, look at that. Eating right out of the cup. Very nice. There you go, buddy. Want a little bit more? Want a little bit more? There you go. There you go. Eat it up. This is our last station for the food, so this is the lucky one of the day right here. Well, as you guys know, I always like to end these things on a water feature, if at all possible. And what better water feature than a tank full of turtles? Turtles are never camera shy. They always like to swim right up and give me a show. And if you liked what you saw here today, please go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel, and while you're at it, go ahead and hit subscribe and the little bell notification next to it so you can be the first to know when a new adventure comes out. This has been an absolute blast here today at Sustainable Safari in the Maplewood Mall right here in Maplewood, Minnesota. We got to see all sorts of different animals. We got to pet them and, and feed them, and it was just a riot. And if you haven't been here, please come on down and take a look because you have to really see it to believe it firsthand. And so thank you guys all so much for the support that you've given me so far. And until next time, I hope to catch you on the flip side. And so this gentleman is actually gonna show us one of these turtles. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, what a cute little guy. What kind of turtle is that? I believe he is a painted shell. Painted shell? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Is uh, there? Does he have a name? Um, I actually have no idea, but I just sure. <laughs> I make him up or I guess a name for him. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll call that one Tommy Turtle. Tommy Turtle. <laughs> Tommy Turtle is your name. Bud. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Anytime, man.